Welcome, Flameborn. This is the Eerie Knight of the Suda Posse, and today we're going to dive into my 100 most essential tips in Enshrouded. Whether you are a beginner or have played a couple hundred hours, there's something for everyone. We're going to cover everything from general gameplay to loot, building, and much more. Everything is timestamped, so feel free to skip to the category of your choice. Without further ado, let's glide right in. When you first start a new world, immediately get the blacksmith located right across Braylon Bridge and craft some scrap tools. They are much better than the stone tools and will allow you to mine materials faster to build your first home. Hey! Health and stamina regen at the beginning of the game obtained through skills, rings, and armors is lacking, so pick up all the berries, water, and honey you can see. Berries give you plus two health per second, water gives you a slight endurance boost along with some stamina regen, and honey can give you a whopping 15 stamina regen, so pop that bad boy before mining or a tough fight. I don't have any stamina right now. Settle near a well. Before you can build one yourself from the carpenter, having easy access to a well will help you plant crops, allow you to make health potions, and early game, use water directly for stamina bonuses as previously mentioned. Once you can build a well, build plenty of them for infinite water. Two is the bare minimum for a sustainable supply. If you are short on water and or wells, you can pick up and place down a well to instantly get more water. Settle down near a great item spawn location, indicated by gold chests. That way you can always get a nice new item every time you log in playing solo or after the server restarts if playing on a dedicated server. Everything is better when it's free and easy, including honey. Settle near a good amount of honey. It really helps to accumulate it faster aside from picking it up randomly in the world. Honey is used in several healing potions, making it a critical crafting ingredient. Don't neglect comfort. No, not that kind, but yes, kind of that. Even with the early game comfort bonuses, you can achieve greater than 10 plus minutes of rested bonus. This bonus increases your maximum stamina and stamina regeneration, which can be the difference maker between life and death. To maximize your comfort, Place the highest comfort value for each unique category, including beds, tables, fireplaces, chairs, benches, bathroom, illumination, wall decorations, and carpets. Placing one of each category will give you a high comfort level even early on, though not all categories will be available right away. Well, welcome to the home. Your mm -hmm. chests are over here. Comfort doesn't stack within the same categories. Take illumination, for example. Only the highest illumination comfort level will be applied if multiple light sources are placed. So having multiple light sources won't be additive and if using several types, the game uses the highest bonus when calculating the comfort level. Press shift plus R to automatically fill up existing containers. It's a godsend. Be careful where you fly within the shroud. Don't just blind jump into the shroud without having an idea of where you are going. Unless you like instant death, then go for it champ. How many times have you rolled off a ledge or a cliff after gliding? Right click to cancel roll when landing. Always put things in your inventory. Craft everything you can from craftspeople and crafting stations and put in your inventory as you could unlock that elusive recipe. Happy to help. Lock picks cost two scrap metal to craft from your backpack, but cost only one from the blacksmith. Save those scraps for better things like UFO ships. Upon entering East Lapis in the Kindle Waste, to retrieve the loom for the hunter, you will automatically unlock the spinning wheel. This is low-key one of the best workshops in the game as it reduces the amount of flax to craft linen from two in the hand spindle to one in the spinning wheel. It does take 30 seconds to craft versus 10 seconds in the hand spindle, but the savings in flax alone is worth the extra time. Plus, you can simply craft more spinning wheels to compensate for the extra duration. With how expensive late game armor is to craft, with five linen creating one fabric and three fabric creating one padding, and multiple paddings used in various armor pieces, getting half as much linen from the hand spindle really hurts. So save that flax for when you unlock the spinning wheel. Jump and glide to traverse steep terrain. This was nerfed recently but still works quite well. Notch on places from which to jump up unwalkable terrain or simply tunnel through to reach greater heights. Double jump makes a huge difference in your maneuverability. Must get for the explorer on the run and jump. If accidentally falling, don't just splat on the ground. Instead, press spacebar to glide. You can repeat this to break your fall if you happen to collide with an unmovable object. You can also fast travel while falling, so if you've got enough time to contemplate your death, instead, hightail it out of there. Beat me up! Beat down wood doors instead of using lockpicks. Besides, all doors are meant to be broken. Don't think so. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Wow. However, stronger doors require a stronger solution. Want to build more crafting stations but don't have the required items to do so? Easy! 
Go back to the loot locations and pick them up again. You can amass more kettles, saw blades, and the like long before you have the ability to craft another one, especially saw blades, which require iron. Create markers for abundant resource locations. Rather obvious, but extremely important. Smash everything. Pick up everything. For wood, scrap metal, and the items they contain within, everything is useful even if it doesn't appear so quite yet. This is good as not only can you unlock additional recipes, but in the case of farmable plants, you can take a single plant you found, like wheat, oh, I got a wheat city. Yes, I and turn it into 20 plants and from there grow it exponentially, all without ever finding where to find mass wheat on the world map. Not too shabby. Always save a part of your harvest for making additional seeds. Again, rather obvious, but it beats having to run around picking more plants out in the wild. If you've got yourself an elevated garden, planting on the border can make plants disappear because alpha reasons. I haven't seen this happen on the ground, so feel free to plant with reckless abandon on Mother Terra. Flax, 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 flax. It is in a lot of late game craftable items. Pick it everywhere you see it in the Revelwood and plant a ton of it. You cannot have enough of the stuff. Seriously, what are you waiting for? Short on scrap metal? Go to any location full of scavengers, kill them all, loot them, and smash everything they own. Sounds mean, but it's not my fault they hoard scrap from the rest of us. Use non-magical chests to store blocks, weapons, etc. Since you don't need them for crafting, save magical chests to store all raw materials. Fighting with your wand and holding block is very effective. You can essentially not take damage as long as your stamina holds up. Don't neglect stamina. Blocking, sprinting, gliding, jumping, use stamina. So you can quickly run out if you've overlooked it. Mobility is everything, and getting surrounded by many enemies is the main source of death. So no matter what you spec into, make sure to put some points into endurance. Physical resistance is more important than magical resistance. Currently, there are way more sources of physical damage in the game than magical, so always go for physical resistance if you have the choice. Even if you don't use yeah. arrows, take them with you so you can hit long-range door triggers. Nice! In multiplayer, items are not gated by player level, so you can instantly boost the combat power and survivability of newer players by gifting them higher level gear. Okay, I'm ready to take my gifts. Look at the gift ready, girl! Yeah, you're, you're looking a little bit uh, underdressed right now. Yeah, I'm ready to be dressed. Oh, I look great. Mining ores is a great source of experience. You can level up surprisingly quick through mining, and with better pickaxes, it becomes even faster. Higher tech pickaxes lower the amount of swings to get an ore from their more primitive variants. Swinging 12 times for each tool. I got one copper from the stone pickaxe, two copper ore from the scrap, three copper ore from the copper pickaxe, nine copper ore from the bronze, and 10 copper from the iron. If you are new to the game, hands down the best way of traveling around the world map is by gliding from high elevations like the spires. Gliding is considerably faster than running, especially as you unlock better gliders. The higher you can jump from, the better as you can cover a larger distance. In actuality, you'll frequently have lots of leftover stamina. Such a waste. If only you could jump from even higher. Not to worry, you can always build it yourself. If you are a masochist like me, you can build all the way to the top of the world, but even a third of the height will tower over all spires. When combined with stamina food buffs and the rested bonus, you can increase your glide distance even further. And if you want to glide all the way across the map, you might find yourself without enough stamina, obviously. Not to worry, press X while falling to sit on what? I don't know, but the rushing wind around your rear end must be quite soothing, allowing you to recuperate stamina and endlessly glide as long as you have enough height. Always save at least one altar for fast traveling to a specific location. Doing several quests in a region and need to return home to clear inventory and restock? Drop down an altar and have easy access to that local area. You can also use altars as a mobile item repair shop for when you need to repair items in a pinch. Need to spend an extended time in the shroud and running low on time? Once you locate a fire beacon in the shroud, mark it so you can revisit it later in case of an emergency. Obelisks are super useful for tracking down missing shroud roots and elixir wells. 
since you gain skill points for clearing out these areas, it is vital to track down every single one. Thus, if you go interact with every single obelisk, you should find that elusive missing shroud room. Pick up everything and keep it. Something may not be useful when you first pick it up, or you might feel it is obsolete after you get better resources, but could be important later. For example, I made the mistake of ditching most of my grilled wolf meat once I gained access to grilled game meat, only to find out later that wolf meat is used in open sandwiches, which is a strong late game meal providing excellent butts. Even rubble itself can have a use in constructing roughly cut stone blocks, so best learn to be a top tier hoarder. When you see suspicious rubble or stone, dig down. You might find a nice surprise. It pays to grave rub. Anything that looks suspicious like a marker or a gravestone, break out the pickaxe and get to grave robbing. Hey, they don't need it anymore. Loot farming is a tried and true practice across all games in the genre, and you don't have to look too far from the starting area to immediately become a farmer. Towards the other end of Braylon Bridge opposite the starting area, you'll find some suspicious rubble. Dig down to reveal a gold chest. Set up your altar nearby and you can repeat this over and over. A great early legendary sword, the Wailing Blade, can be located just south of the Alchemist Vault within a scavenger stash. Enter the cave, eliminate the locals, and claim your gold chest at the end. Once you advance a bit further, a great epic sword called Hail Scourge can be found in the Lone Thistle, which is located east of the Farmer's Vault and north of Mistbury Catacombs. Locate a quaint little graveyard and commit the aforementioned grave robbing mentioned a few tips ago. In a chest six feet under, you'll find the weapon. Once you reach Revelwood, there's a great chest near the carpentry camp located under some rubble. I actually set up my home not far from this location following tip number six, so I can easily log in and farm this chest over and over. It's got level 13 items, including weapons, armor, and shields. You could also set up a temporary altar near the spot for some easy item farming. An amazing mid-game item farming location is up in the northwest of Riverwood near a flame sanctum. This custom marker indicates the entrance for a cave and my altar up top is to speed up my farm. Getting the altar in place can be a bit tricky, but after tunneling your way up, you can freely place an altar and gain access to two gold chests and one silver. Glide down to immediately open a gold, enter the cave and open a silver to your right, and cross the cave to open the second gold chest. This farm loop is extremely efficient and can net you a ton of items, which essentially makes you rich. It's raining runes. No matter which location you farm, you can basically get an infinite amount of runes by salvaging all the items you don't want to keep. As such, there is no reason not to upgrade your items, especially epics and legendaries, which can outpower higher leveled commons and rares as they have more upgrades available. Sparks also respawn upon login, so you can set up an altar close to a flame sanctum and farm them. The amazing farm location I just mentioned a few tips back with the three chests also has a flame sanctum right by that gives two sparks. Truly an excellent location. In the Nomad Highlands, Jasmina's Apothesis, probably butchered that, a great axe that does fire damage and has health leech can be found in the Pillars of Creation at a Southern Caravan location. Kill the Buka Brawler, and upon looting his corpse, grab the axe. Just thank your lucky stars he didn't wield that axe himself. When building, a great visual indicator to tell which block will be removed upon right-clicking is by the location of the solid blue region of your blueprint. Any surface touching that will be removed, so placing this box at the corner of the wall and floor will remove either floor or wall depending on how the blue region is aimed. See? Floor, wall, floor, wall. You get it. This also applies to placing blocks as well. To remove an altar, click on the Extinguish Flame button. This will prompt another Extinguish Flame button in red. Upon clicking that, a 30 second timer starts during which, if you get cold feet, you could cancel removal. After the timer is up, say goodbye to the altar forever. Note, you don't get any shroud cores back, so use wisely. You can also move an altar around by first placing an altar so that you can build, after which you can place another altar anywhere as long as it is supported underneath. This way you can locate your altar anywhere in your home or at the top of the world. When placing blocks from your blueprint, you will only use blocks required to fill the space. Take this 4 meter wall shape for example. It costs 64 blocks as noted by the right number to place the entire wall. Overlapping any part of that wall over existing structure will reduce the amount of blocks as noted by the number on the right decreasing. This is an excellent way to fill in large gaps carefree. 
Another useful way to use this is it can tell you if you are aligned or not. Here I want to place less than a full foundation on either side. To make sure it is aligned, we can highlight the region that isn't filled and see what amount of material would be required to fill it. Here, that is 160 blocks. If it is perfectly aligned, it would be 160 on the other side. However, it is only 128. Thus, we need to place in another row using 32 additional blocks to bring the 160 down to 128. Never use foundations. They are extremely costly and the same structure can be made for much cheaper by using ceilings and walls. If we compare an eight by eight meter region, Foundations use 1,024 blocks, while walls and ceilings use 436. It takes a bit longer to make, but it takes longer still to mine all the resources, so it's still faster. Don't dig out terrain in your altar region with your pickaxe. Despite common sense, the fastest way to do it is to use your hammer to make fast underground caves, tunnels, or entire dwellings. If you've taken over a POI and have some undesirable objects left by their previous owners, dismantle things within an altar region by pressing E, which will greatly speed up the room removal process. Rakes are an excellent tool for leveling the ground for sure, but if you level the ground over farm soil, it will actually spread the soil around for free. Never craft farm soil ever again. This also works with many other terrain types like different ores. You can mine something like luminous growth, place down a bit, and rake it over, spreading its otherworldly goodness across the land. Not a broken game mechanic at all. You can even place gardens above the ground using our favorite tool. However, we cannot directly place farm soil on the floor and spread it around. What we need to do first is to put down a layer of dirt, and similar to the farm soil, we cannot spread it around with the rake. Instead, cover the entire area in which you want to place your garden with dirt. Fortunately, dirt is easily attainable, so covering a large area is quite simple. Next, plop down a batch of farm soil. Just a little bit will suffice. And now that we have a layer of dirt, we can finally use the rake to spread the farm soil around. The reason for the dirt is to enable us to use the rake on the farm soil, which is not as readily plentiful as dirt. And once we start raking the farm soil, we can even spread it over regions with no dirt. And finally, we can do the same thing for our upper floor and spread the dirt and farm soil all around. Ladder scaffolds are quite useful in building. Normally, I use temporarily placed blocks to reach higher areas, but scaffolds can be stacked such that you can climb high within a small region, unlike stairs, which require way more room. Aligning a roof can be tricky business, but not to worry. The game provides you with a nice visual indicator. A properly aligned roof will have a straight rooftop with a distinctive patterning, while a roof clipping through another one will not. When constructing your own railings, make sure the top of the railing is three blocks high above the path, completely protecting you from falling. A two block high railing won't prevent you from running over it. Woodguard is a magical place. Not just for its scenic views, but also because you can grab farm soil, dirt roads, and flower soil all here. Well, to be fair, you can get dirt roads almost anywhere, but here is the only place I know of where you can get all three. So break out your pickaxe and get to farming farm soil, dirt roads, and flowers. Never craft farm soil yourself. This has all you'll ever need. Quite literally. Though it doesn't make sense, farm soil actually extends deep underground below the actual farm, giving, by my estimation, a literal shit ton of farm soil. Building at night or in dark places like a cave? Not to worry. Place some luminescent blocks and see everything Thing despite the sun's laziness. The blue blocks can also make an excellent source of exterior lighting. Now, it may not come as a surprise to you, but a voxel game is lacking in some nice curves. As you can see here, I am trying to walk towards the tree, but cannot get any closer. I suspect the collider is cylindrical and is at least the width of the base of the tree. While that may bum you out, the next best thing you can do is just to discretize anything curved to achieve arches, half-circled contours, or an entire circle. Simply consult this handy PDF chart, link in the description below, to make quarter, half, full, or whatever fraction circular contours of various sizes. Naturally, the larger it is, the more circular it looks, so sometimes size is everything. Many building materials are unlocked simply by placing the appropriate material in your inventory. However, all others require more work. Here's how you can find all the building materials in the game. To find the bone block, make your way north of the Springlands ancient spire and enter the hidden tomb entry. Make your way past some spiders until at last you reach a stone coffin housing the bone block. While the luminescent block fits into the category of dropping the appropriate material into your inventory, it does bear mentioning you can get it as early as the Springlands area instead of waiting till you reach Revelwood and beyond, in which you'll find luminescent growth in most caves. 
Off in the distance, you can see the ancient spire and Braylon Bridge. Bringing up the map, note the location I am currently standing to the west of the bridge, and from this location, run towards the cave entrance in the southwest, and there you'll be. To find the roughly cut stone block, do the A Story of Rock quest in Netherton. Note my location on the map. Make your way up this ruined building, and up at the top is a crate containing this block material. The half-timbered block can be found west of Revelwood Ancient Spire in the little village of Diadwin. Head over there and in the little village you'll find a silver chest containing the building material. The weathered stone block can be found while doing the Rumble in the Catacombs quest in the Bramble Spine Boneyard. Locate the wooden door a fair distance inside that requires a lockpick and instead beat it down. Inside is a chest and the block. The city wall block can be found in Fonsong Frontier. After fighting the matron, Head up to the tower, and upon reaching the top, you'll find the building material in a gold chest. This next one is a bit trickier. If you want to grab the quest for the castle wall stone block, head over to the Imperial Capital. Head toward a tower located at southeast corner of the city in the Shanty Shacks region. In the middle floor of the tower, which is a bit tricky to reach, though with double jump it makes it a lot easier, reading the lore book will unlock the quest for the block. The entrance for the cave you need to enter is right around this custom marker here. Make your way through the cave out the other side and head toward the top of the mine entrance. There you'll spot a crane upon which is the chest and your reward. Down by the area where the farmer gives you the quest for the almanac of plants, you can find the limestone block nearby the raided caravan stash marker. Climbing up to the highest point will give you the block in a silver chest. To get the fancy stone building material, make your way over to the Raven's Keep. Deeper within the cave, you'll find an open jail cell with a silver chest. Pop it open and retrieve thy reward. The regular stone block can be found in the ruined bridge just east of Lupa's Lair. The mixed stones quest will lead you to the location and the block. The refined stone block can be found in the gate to the Pillars of Creation when retrieving the masonry tools. Upon grabbing those for the carpenter, the refined stone block is automatically unlocked. The Desert City wall block is located in the small town of Brittlebush in the Kindle Waste region in this building. The highly polished stone block is lootable after defeating the matron in Ocean's Heart near Lapis. The Desert Temple block requires a bit more work. Head to the Sun Temple location down here and to open the main door, you'll need to do three simple puzzles to activate the switches over said main door. Enter and you'll come across a skeleton laying on the ground holding the block in hand. And the well block can be found from this quest here given by the carpenter. Dive into the elixir well, defeat the fell monstrosity, and head over into a little cavern and open the chest. The last remaining tips will govern the location of various important resources you will need on your journey. This doesn't cover every material in the game, which would be a video on its own, but this should help new players find important materials. Shroudwood, which is used in a variety of recipes and required for the Shroudwood block, can be found in any Shroud location by simply cutting down a tree. Shroud liquid can be found pretty much anywhere in the Shroud by either pressing E on these fungal looking things or by cutting down these stalks. They can have a different appearance throughout the Shrouds across the map, but if it has a fungal looking appearance, probably a good place to start. Shroud cores can be crafted from the Alchemist, but they can be looted from bosses in the Shroud as well as this more common flying enemy that flings magic at you. Salt can be found at the Egerton Salt Mines, a bit northwest of the Springlands Ancient Spire. You don't have to travel too far within the mines to find some easily obtainable salt. Copper can be found in many regions starting in Revelwood. It's pretty easy to spot and it is frequently in close proximity to some clay. I've only ever seen amber in one general area on the map in any abundance, which is located in the far northwest region of Revelwood, actually within the cave containing amazing farming chests I mentioned way back when, making that location even more amazing. Tin can be found in the mining rift located east of the imperial capital in the shroud via a cave entrance. In multiple places within the mine, you can find it. Once you make it a bit further into the Nomad Highlands, you can find it in the Shroud Rue Cave located by this marker north of the Ancient Spire. Mint Mushroom Meat can be found in the Shroud within the Umber Hollow region. Hack away at these green looking things and it'll rain green meat. Shroud Sacks can be first harvested from these purple flower enemies in the Shrouds of Revelwood. What is it? Shroud Sack. Once you make it to the Nomad Heights Shroud, you can get it from these more intimidating beasts along with ammonia glands. Fossilized bone can be first obtained in the Nomad Heights at these two locations. The first location is right by the Umber Hollow, and the second location is just west of the Nomad Heights Ancient Spire. 
Sulfur is available in the Kindle Waste in great abundance. Simply look for the yellow looking material and mine it with your pickaxe. Despite it being a rare gem in its description, it is anything but that. Lapis, la Lapis, lazi bleh. Lapis Lazuli can be found in the Kindle Waste indicated by its bluish tint. Iron ore can be found in the Ridgeback Mine south of Kindle Waste Ancient Spire. However, there is another location farther north at this custom map marker inside a cave. It is much safer to reach without needing to go into the shroud and face higher level enemies if you want to access iron a bit earlier. And that, my friends, is my 100 plus most essential tips in Enshrouded. If at least one of these tips aids you on your quest, then I have succeeded in my mission. Please drop a like and subscribe if you found the video informative and would like to see more content like it on the channel. Feel free to drop a comment about the things you'd like to see next. I'd also like to extend a heartfelt shout out to all of our awesome patrons whose generosity is funneled back into the channel. This is Eerie Knight signing off. See you all next time.